My name is Dr. Dan Heron. I'm the Laparoscopic Fellowship Director at the Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City. And Dr. Graham had asked me to answer a few questions about how you can get the fellowship program of your choice. I can't really speak for every fellowship program, but I can tell you a little bit about how the fellow selection process runs at Mount Sinai, and I'm sure that it's applicable to many other fellowship programs around the country. At Mount Sinai, as in many fellowship programs, we take all our fellowship applicants through the fellowship council. And what that means is that you have to be very conscientious about getting your application into the fellowship council on time by the deadline and making sure that it's complete. So that means not only the parts which you are going to be entering into the fellowship council website, but also your letters of recommendation. Please make sure that you get your letters of recommendation in on time because until your application is really complete, we don't have uh, the opportunity to review it and to invite you for an interview. Once we do uh, have your completed application in hand, uh, what we'll do is we'll go through it in a, on a fairly uh, formal basis, and we have a little um, candidate uh, evaluation form that we use when we're reviewing your application. The first thing we look at is your academic background, so that would include everything from what college you went to to your medical school and your residency training. We're not looking only for one type of resident. We're not focused on big-time academic programs or very, very busy clinical programs. We're really open-minded, and we want to give residents from many different types of programs the opportunity to interview here. But by looking at where, you're, where you've trained, it gives us a better sense of where you're coming from and how we can uh, better evaluate your, your um, accomplishments to date. We're looking at um, your research activity, and research can take many different forms. So in its simplest basis, it might just be a case report that you submitted to a publication. But uh, we're also looking at things like formal research projects, uh, case series, um, clinical reviews, certainly basic science if you've had a chance to go out into the lab and do any basic science research. Uh, but there are a lot of opportunities to publish during your residency, and maybe it is a, uh, again, maybe it's something as simple as a case report, or maybe it's working with a faculty member to write a chapter. But all of these things are opportunities for you to show that you've got an interest in uh, academic productivity, and almost every fellowship program is going to be interested in uh, seeing something like this on your CV. One of the very important parts of your application is the letters of recommendation that you're getting from faculty members who know you. And what we're really looking for um, in a letter of recommendation is the sense that the faculty member really knows who you are. They've had a chance to work with you firsthand, uh, that they know you, they've seen you in the operating room, they've seen you in the hospital, or maybe they've seen you in a research setting or a, a year off setting. And um, that's so important to us because we get some letters which are very generic and say, so basically it's just a recitation of your CV. And that really doesn't help us to get a better sense of who you are because you've already sent us your CV. So uh, please do your best to find people who know you well to write your letters of recommendation. Yes, it's nice if it can be a, a big name uh, because that may carry a little bit more weight, but we would much rather see a letter from someone who's not a big name who knows you very well than a letter from a big shot who doesn't really know you from one of the other residents in your year. Um, so please get those letters in, get them in on time, and once we have a chance to look at your whole application and those letters of recommendation, we put together um, we put together all this information into an overall score, and essentially we take the applicants who have the highest overall score and invite them for an interview. At Mount Sinai, we have two interview sessions, and during each of the interview sessions, we get together usually three or four faculty members in, in addition to the fellowship director and myself. Um, sometimes I will be able to get my chairman to join in as well. And you'll, of course, get to meet our current laparoscopic fellow as well as our current uh, minimally invasive endocrine fellow. Uh, and sometimes you get to meet some of the residents in the program as well. That's a really important thing that you're able to meet the fellows uh, uh, that are currently there in the program because they're really going to be your best opportunity to find out exactly 
what the fellowship program is like from the fellow's own point of view. Um, when you come in on the interview day, um, you're going to get to meet, as I said, with usually anywhere from two to four faculty members in addition to uh, the fellowship director. And during those interviews, we're looking at a number of different things. Obviously, we're going to review your written application. We're going to look at your academic uh, qualifications. But the most important thing we're going to do is get a personal impression of you. Um, fellowship is a very, uh, it's a very, uh, you know, it's 12 months of working very closely with a small group of people. And so personal impression makes a, 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 is a very important aspect of the interview. We want to know if you're the kind of person who will fit in well in the Mount Sinai system. Are you going to be easy to work with in the operating room? Are you going to be conscientious when you're taking care of patients? Are you going to be the kind of person who's easy to spend long hours working with, uh, you know, on a daily basis? And it's not just one person who's looking at this, but it's usually three or four faculty members who are all trying to get a sense of what is it going to be like to work with you on a daily basis. Also, the faculty members are going to individually go through your letters of recommendation because they may personally know uh, one or more of your letter writers, and that can give them a better sense of uh, understanding what's written in your recommendation. Once the interview day is done, uh, all the faculty members sit down together and we all kind of discuss our impressions of what it was like to meet with you. And based on that, we come up with our final rank list, uh, which we then submit to the Fellowship Council, just like you submit your rank list to the Fellowship Council. It's very important that you understand how the rank system works, because um, some people go into the generating their rank list with some uh, misconceptions as to how the system is functioning. Um, you are not penalized when you create your rank list for aiming high. So if there is a fellowship that you think is a long shot, you don't think you have a very good chance of getting into it, but it's definitely your first choice, you should definitely rank that program as your first choice. Some residents are worried that, well, it might be wasting my first choice and I'd be better off using that first choice for a sure thing. Um, that's not the way the match system works. The match system will put you in the highest program on your rank list that has room for you. So there is no penalty toward shooting high. So if there's a program that you really want to go to, put it at the top of your list, uh, and then same deal for your second choice. Even if your second choice is a long shot, even if your third choice is a long shot, put them all one, two, three, four, if you don't get into one of those long shot programs, you're not going to be penalized for the first program, the highest ranked program in your list that has a spot for you uh, is where you're going to match. We do the same thing with our program. So if we, um, if we have a, a fellow applicant who we really like, but we don't think they're very likely to rank us very high, we're still going to rank them high because uh, you never know and uh, it's always good to, to aim high. Um, and the match system will not penalize you for aiming high. The most important thing for our fellowships once they match here is to get, uh, get their licensing uh, paperwork in order. It can sometimes take a few months to get a New York State license, and that's a, a, a very important prerequisite before you can start working here at Mount Sinai. So that's uh, the first thing we get started on, and then we get started on the hospital credentialing as well. So it's a lengthy process, um, but I think it's, uh, a fairly, um, it's a fairly good process that allows us to get to know you through your written application. It allows us to get to know you through meeting with you on interview day. And finally, it allows you to choose the best program, which is going to be the best possible fit for you. So good luck on your application. I hope that this information has been helpful for you, and I look forward to... Uh, uh, reading your application when you submit it to the Fellowship Council and hopefully seeing you on interview day. Take care.